At the age of 45 years, Richard Brown was a confirmed bachelor whose house hadn't had a woman live in it in a long time. There was dust on the window seals, dried flowers in the pots, and an empty refrigerator, which indicated that the man really hadn't adapted to living on his own. The last time Richard had a serious relationship was five years ago, but then he realized that he didn't love that person at all. Rebecca was great at taking care of the house and her husband, but those qualities didn't mean anything to Richard. In the depths of his soul, he knew that he loved another woman. He'd been having feelings for her for about 25 years. Once in a while, Richard's thoughts took him back to the time when he was young and full of energy. When you're young, you perceive life differently, and the businessman knew it like no one else. Now, Richard had everything that he didn't have in his youth, because back then, his constant lack of money prevented him from following his dreams. Having reached great heights in the financial field, the man started living a free life of a person who had no one to think about or care about except for himself. Richard's business brought him such an income that his money would be enough for several years of a comfortable existence. Of course, in order to achieve such levels of success, the businessman had to put in a lot of time and effort and get through many hardships on his way. Trying to brighten up his lonely existence, Richard had some flings, but none of them ever led to anything serious. The businessman usually found his women on dating sites, which allowed him to quickly learn everything he wanted to know about them. However, Richard never hid his true intentions and never promised any of those women a long-term relationship. The way the businessman saw it, as long as he was being honest, he wasn't doing anything wrong. Few people knew that Richard was actually monogamous and kept loving only one person throughout his entire life. Sometimes, especially in the evenings, the businessman's thoughts took him back to the events that happened 20 years ago when he was studying economics at the university and met a young woman named Monica. They met at a student Thanksgiving party and immediately felt a strong mutual attraction. The first date was followed by the second and the third which gave them both hope for a future relationship. The only obstacle to the happiness of the young people was Richard's parents, who disliked Monica at first sight. Son, take my word for it. This woman isn't a good match for you, Amanda Brown said. Richard understood that the reason behind his parents' disapproval was the fact that Monica was poor. She was raised at an orphanage and never knew parental care or affection. Since Richard always had a mind of his own, the opinion of his parents could hardly affect his feelings for his girlfriend. Having chosen to fight for his happiness, the young people even rented out a small house on the outskirts of the city and moved in together. At about that time, Richard got his girlfriend a beautiful gift, a silver bracelet, which cost him all the cash he had. Richard's parents were furious and did everything in their power to break up the couple. What they didn't know at the time was that all they had to do was wait because their son would soon come back home. It was all because of the fire that broke out in Monica and Richard's home. The firefighters who had arrived at the scene were sure that the fire was caused by faulty wiring. On that fateful day, Richard was interning at the office of one of the trading companies in the city and was among the last people to learn about the tragedy. Unfortunately, Monica wasn't feeling well that day and thus decided to stay home, unaware of the consequences that decision would have. Looking at the charred debris left in the place of their home, Richard couldn't hold back his tears. The woman he loved with all of his heart died in that fire. Since the fire was very strong, even the experienced rescuers couldn't find anything on the site of the tragedy. That day, Richard cried for what was probably the first time in his life. The man's grief was so deep that people in his life couldn't help but notice it. Richard lost weight and started looking haggard, which seriously frightened his parents. It took the man about a year to start getting better, after which he gradually returned to his former life. By that time, Richard had found a good job, which allowed him to earn good money in the future. Moreover, thanks to his parents, he married Rebecca, who they always saw as a perfect partner for their son. As could have been expected, Richard's family life didn't work out from the very beginning. This was partly due to the fact that he never loved Rebecca, and partly because they never managed to have children, which could have strengthened their union, which unfortunately wasn't a great one. Nevertheless, Richard lived with Rebecca for about 15 years, 
after which he filed for divorce and put an end to his family life. To the surprise of the businessman's friends and acquaintances, he didn't feel the least bit sad about living his life all alone. On the contrary, Richard finally got the freedom he wanted, which allowed him to do whatever he felt like with his life. And now the businessman wasn't wasting his free evening. He was chatting with yet another woman online. April, like Richard, was 45 years old, which the businessman saw as an advantage. The only thing that upset Richard was the fact that her profile didn't have a picture. However, that wasn't all that important because the businessman knew that sooner or later, he would persuade the mysterious stranger to meet him in real life. Richard enjoyed talking to April so much that he didn't even notice that it was well past midnight already. The woman was not only interesting to talk to, but in some incomprehensible way, she seemed to understand Richard on some deeper level and could even predict his answers. Who is this April? Is she a psychic or something? Richard thought, unable to fall asleep. Having barely opened his eyes the next morning, the businessman rushed to send April a message, but she had already sent him one, wishing him a good day at work. During the entire day, Richard couldn't think of anything else but talking with the woman who seemed to have awakened his soul, causing him to feel all kinds of things he hadn't felt in a very long time. That evening, he rushed home to get to his laptop as soon as possible, expecting another night of exciting conversation with April, who'd become his number one interest in life. When the businessman's patience reached its limit, he invited the mysterious stranger out on a date but to his great disappointment, the woman rejected his proposal. April acted as if she was the one making all of the decisions in the rapidly developing, albeit online, relationship, and all that was left for Richard to do was to follow her lead. Realizing that he wasn't in control was very exciting for the businessman and only intensified his interest in April. Asking the woman to meet him in real life over and over again, Richard kept getting rejected who does she think she is? Richard was getting annoyed, losing the last of his patience. Time passed, but April was still in no hurry to see the man in real life, always coming up with an excuse to say no. And when Richard was about to become completely disappointed in his mysterious stranger, he got a message from her offering to meet up in a restaurant. Needless to say, the businessman was beyond happy. After all, he'd been dreaming about it for a whole month. Well, it's finally gonna happen, the businessman whispered, smiling at his own reflection in the mirror. Richard was meticulously getting ready for his date. He went to the barber shop, took a shower, and got a clean shave. Then he dressed in his best suit and used his best cologne. On his way to the restaurant, he stopped by the flower shop and got April a huge bouquet of white roses. Richard always adhered to the rule that punctuality is the politeness of kings. So he got to the restaurant a couple of minutes before their date. Hurrying to get to his table, the businessman didn't even notice the cleaning lady, who was carefully mopping the floors in between the tables. Still clutching the bouquet of roses in his hand, Richard bumped into the woman, who seemed to have purposely blocked his way. Excuse me, ma'am. I didn't mean to bump into you, I, I promise. The businessman started apologizing. It's okay, it happens. The cleaning lady answered and touched her hair. At that moment, Richard saw some shiny object on the wrist of her right hand. The businessman involuntarily fixed his gaze on it and saw that it was a silver bracelet of a very original shape. But that wasn't the most interesting thing about it. Richard had seen this piece of jewelry before. He was actually the one who bought it from a jewelry shop 20 years ago. Dear Lord, this can't be happening flashed through the businessman's head. But when Richard took a closer look at the cleaning lady, he saw the painfully familiar features that he had carefully kept in his memory all this time. Monica, is that you? Uh, how is this even possible? The businessman whispered, turning pale and dropping the bouquet. The woman in front of him smiled and nodded her head. Yes, Richard, it's me. Didn't you expect to see me, did you? It was me who found you on that dating site. I've been talking to you as April all this time, before asking you to meet me here. As you can see, I work here, Monica added. Richard's mind went all hazy. 
all these long years he'd been living convinced that the love of his life had died in the fire. But the truth turned out to be completely different. Realizing that they needed to have a serious conversation, Richard took Monica by the hand and led her to the table that he had booked. As he did it, the businessman gave the administrator such a look that he preferred to remain silent and pretend not to notice that the cleaning lady was sitting at the table with the very well-dressed and obviously wealthy man. During dinner, Monica told her ex-fiance what actually happened 20 years ago. Richard suspected that his parents had something to do with it, and Monica's story confirmed his suspicions. As it turned out, that fire wasn't at all an accident. It was arson arranged by Richard's father. Moreover, Monica was told to leave the city so that her fiancé would believe that she had died. Your father was so intimidating. He also threatened to send me to jail on some false charges if I didn't back down. I didn't feel like I had a choice, especially since I was already pregnant. You have to understand, the woman said with tears in her eyes. Pregnant? But why, did, why didn't you tell me? exclaimed Richard. Monica just shook her head and, dabbing her eyes with the handkerchief, said, You have a son, Billy. He's 19. Richard's eyes filled with tears. The businessman lived his whole life convinced that he was a childless bachelor who would end up dying miserable and alone. But now it turned out that the love of his life was actually alive and that he also had an adult son. It wasn't an accident that I reached out to you now. I need help. Billy got into an accident on his motorcycle six months ago. Monica got to the point. But he's alive, right? Was Billy hurt? The businessman exclaimed, turning more pale. Monica sighed sadly, lowering her eyes, and said, Billy suffered a spinal injury. He's currently wheelchair-bound. However, there's a surgery he could get which would get him back on his feet. The only problem is that I don't have the money to pay for it. Richard turned even paler, after which, for the first time in his life, he realized that people didn't just need money to have fun, but that it could also be used for good things, which he hadn't been doing much of lately. Having assured Monica that he would take care of everything, Richard called all of his friends and found a hospital where they could put his son back on his feet. Without putting things off, the man called the hospital and made all of the arrangements, after which he paid for the surgery his son needed. Then he put his arm around Monica's shoulders. Everything will be fine, do you hear me? We'll definitely get Billy back on his feet. The businessman whispered, kneeling down in front of his beloved woman. The waiters rushing about in between the tables were very surprised to see an adult man acting like a teenage boy in love, completely oblivious to everyone and everything around him. What no one else could know was the fact that Richard had been dreaming of this moment for 20 long years going over the memories in his head. A week later, Billy underwent surgery, which was successful, thanks to the doctors and the hospital's modern equipment. After that, the young man needed to undergo a two-month physical therapy course, during which both his mother and father supported him. Watching the touching family reunion, the hospital staff couldn't hold back their tears and mentally wished Billy a speedy recovery. At the end of this amazing story, I'd like to add that the ways of the Lord are inscrutable and that there's nothing he can't do, regardless of whether it is now or 20 years.